there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with a little bit of a, just an update video. It's going to be a, a short, sweet video without any editing, so I apologize in advance with any stumblings or ramblings. Um, about the ban list, the updated ban list to modern. Now, this let me give you a bit of a history of how this happens. So each time a set is released, especially right before a Pro Tour uh, in that format, they are notorious for switching up the format by banning specific cards for what Wizards of Coast thinks might be oppressive or I mean they have some goals in modern one of them is that there's no consistent turn two or turn three kills and another goal of modern is to not have one deck really overpass like what they consider like a 20 or 25 percent um portion of the of what we call them of, of the meta so if a deck starts being if, if one in four decks is going to be this certain deck then they have a history of actually banning cards that kind of create this scenario like in, in the past they banned wild nakatl just because the, the with the the reasoning behind wild nakatl is that there would be no other one drop green card played as long as wild nakatl existed and it wasn't necessarily the deck was so powerful it was it was basically on that premise that why would you play any other card in green except for for wild nakatl and these these certain like zoo based strategies so uh, wild nakatl was the first one to really get the axe for a deck that really didn't "Quote unquote need a ban." It was just for the the uh, the health of the format or the diversity of the format. So anyway, so Oath of Gage Wasp was just released, and this isn't news to a lot of people. We all know what the ban list is. Uh, this time it was, of course, Modern that, that was shaken up. Popper was also shaken up, but I I personally don't play Popper. It's been a long time since I played Popper, and I've nothing against the format. It's just I don't have time to really delve into Popper, and it's something that maybe in in 2016 I'll look more into, especially if people are interested in it. I know that I, uh, my local play group is starting to have an interest in Popper. If that's the case, maybe you'll see some uh, some Popper uh, decks. But Popper also got a ban of Cloud of Fairies, which, uh, according to Wizards of the Coast, uh, with their data, that that Cloud of Fairies is is very oppressive, and uh, that the uh, nine of the top ten cards out of the format are blue cards, and a lot of them revolve around the Cloud of Fairies. Cloud of Fairies is not only a very aggressive card, but it can also lead into some uh, infinite combos in the format. So anyway. The, what I want to talk about this time and try to give my perspective because there's a lot of, of, there's a lot of emotions going around with the ban list uh, over the past 24 hours. I mean, if you go to Reddit, it's all over the front page of, page of Reddit. There are a lot of people that are very excited about the ban list, and there's a lot of people that are very upset about the land list, and right, rightfully so because I think that you've put a lot of money into a deck and learned how to play it, and then it gets banned. Um, it, it'd make me pretty upset if somehow Soul Sisters were to become a piece out of that, were to become banned, and I didn't feel it was warranted. So I can empathize with, with some of these Twin players and Amulet of Bloom players. So let's back up. The two cards that were banned were Summer Bloom out of the Amulet, or Titan Bloom deck is what a lot of people like to call it, and Splinter Twin is banned for all the mass uh, different types of Splinter Twin archetypes. So anyway, let's start... I, I have mixed emotions about both. I, this is one of those those times where I really don't think that either of the decks necessarily needed to be banned, but I can also see the reasoning behind why Wizards of Coast chose these two cards, and I can I, I can actually get behind their decision on on both of them. But the first one that I'm I'm more so I, I've personally I've been calling for this one to be banned for a while. If you actually go back, even over, uh, it's been over, maybe a year or over a year that I wanted Summer Bloom banned out of Amulet Bloom, and it's just because it's it, it does violate one of the rules of Modern to have a consistent turn 2 or turn 3 kill. Now, the turn 2 isn't very consistent, the turn 3 is, is a, a lot more so consistent, but it's just also it's so miserable to play against Amulet uh, or Titan Bloom, and I'll give you a few scenarios. One coming from a Soul Sister perspective is Soul Sister I want to be running a nice little curve. I want to be running a 1-drop Soul, Soul Sister and a 2-drop of Johnny's Pride Mate, into a three drop um, Spectral Processions or something, or on the other end, a one drop Sarah Send in a two drop Martyr, sack it, have a six six tack in. Things like that are the ideal scenarios. And it, you know, I really like to play against other decks where my opponent has to stop me from doing that, or I have to stop my opponent from doing something similar to that. But against Amit Bloom, what usually happens is like I need to see a path to exile, because their main threat is Primeval Titan. How the Titan Bloom deck works is it tries to ramp up enough mana to get a titan or a primeval titan to then give it haste and double strike and attack into almost lethal but for the next turn definitely be lethal and just have that huge card advantage that is accumulated from a primeval titan getting four lands on the board or their second way 
is through casting a hive mind and then casting a pact and then having the opponent not being able to pay for the upkeep of the the particular pact. And then they have other ways to tutor up packs and to really it's a really efficient deck because a lot of the the latest lists have been using like three sleight of hands and four serum visions. So they really really neutered the deck to where it's just very very specific cards. So the the diversity of the deck or the variance of the deck is very low. You're trying to do the exact same thing every time. And I I take I really don't like to play magic. Per, this is a personal thing too. I mean everyone is 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 definitely entitled to their opinions on how match should be played. But I like very diverse, um, some of my very favorite matchups, a Jun versus Split and Twin has been, uh, or Jun versus Soul Sisters, excuse me, has been fun in the past because it really turns into what I consider the magic of magic, of trying to play this like mind game with your opponents. Does he have the bull? What do I do here? Do I bait him into this attack? Do I block? Like all these 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 decisions what i found with amulet uh titan bloom is there's there's sometimes you do have some pretty cool decision making in in games but the vast majority of titan bloom versus the vast majority of of matchups is either they have it or they don't i have so many wins in the win column for soul sisters against titan bloom where i've literally kept the like a weird hand and just had to keep it and had no hate cards and thought i was dead in the water and gone like first turn soul sister into the second turn of johnny's pride mate into third turn and just outraced them and they didn't do anything they cast their vigor and they couldn't find anything or they cast their amulet of vigor and they couldn't find anything out their slide of hands and serum visions and they just scoop or the worst one is i remember a time when i molded the five and kept a squadron hawk in honor of the pure and like three lands Casting on uh, the squadron hawk filled up my hand. Casting on a pure, tacked in for two. Cast two more squad or yeah, two more squadron hawks. Uh, tacked in for another two. Then tacked into it with six, and then tacked in it with six. And it was like he, he dirtled for literally like five six turns. The the Titan Bloom deck, and I felt like a draft deck could have beat him at that point. It was like the power level of any deck just putting out a creature would have won that. It had nothing to do with me playing the game against my opponent. It was just my opponent's deck didn't do what it was supposed to do. And it was and it was probably he probably kept a very keepable hand like ancient stirrings and 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 like uh, serum visions and stuff and just missed. Just didn't find what he needed. It's just poor poor luck on his part. And it you know it just didn't feel like playing modern. It felt just being a lot of these like one one uh com- or these combo wins or these these one turn win things are, are very much like that. And they I I would call these decks that, that they lose themselves. They're almost coin flip decks. It has really nothing to do with your opponent. You don't really uh, are you're not really concerned with what your opponent is doing. And yes, it can get a little more complicated than that, but a lot of bloom matchups used to end up coming down if your opponent had a blood moon or not. And he cast a blood moon against uh, Titan Bloom and is miserable for the Titan Bloom player. They couldn't it, it, it just made for some very boring interactions. So I'm okay with getting rid of the Summer Bloom, but that's just preference. I don't think it was too oppressive. You'll see, you saw Bloom decks every now and again. And the problem with that is with, with these high variance decks is sometimes they can just run the table and they can go 8-0 and or, or in in a lot of cases, I think when Sam Black and his, uh, the other guy, the I can't think of his name at the moment, that went second place. And yeah, the finals was very uneventful. Um, blood mooning a couple of the times and just uh, shutting me out that way, but yeah. Anywho, let's go on to the that. That's why I think that was Wizards of the Coast really reasoning about Summer Bloom as well. Is it, it violated a lot of the the rules against Modern and made for un, un, uninteractive games. Let's go on to the second one, which has caused more controversy that no one really saw coming. Everyone saw. Well, I guess I shouldn't say no one, but everyone saw. Summer Bloom getting banned. We've been talking about it. In fact, one of the persons that just won a, was it a Grand Prix or a Star City Open, even said one of the specific reasons why he's piloting is it so he could get the, make sure the tech was banned because he couldn't stand it. But anywho, um, the second one that was banned was Splinter Twin. I have, I have a lot of mixed emotions about because some of my most memorable moments in the modern format has been the outplaying the Splinter Twin decks, like the, the mind games that happens with Soul Sisters versus Splinter Twin, the feigning weakness, the feigning strength, the, you know, really uh, baiting your opponent into casting an unnecessary Splinter Twin or, or, or not casting a Splinter Twin. Or, or, or there's just been many, many times, many games since it has probably been, I would say my second most played match in my entire modern career would be uh, Soul Sisters versus Splinter Twin. Only 
I think the only match I matchup I probably played more is Soul Sisters versus the uh, Jeskai Control variants, and some of those were twin variants, but I, I played that to death because Jeskai Control, just in my local meta, and even it just seems a lot of my tournaments I've entered in, as far as PTQs and 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 um, uh, like GPs and things like that, I have been paired up a ton against the Jeskai Control, and so it's a, a matchup I knew inside out. But anyway, uh, the, the twin the twin does has always been a very interesting game for Soul Sister to play against. Now, I do consider Soul Sisters favorable, uh, depending on how the Splinter Twin builds the 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 deck, and a lot of times these Splinter Twin players actually try to like next level you by siding out the Splinter Twin combo against Soul Sisters and then just trying to play like a a, a, a value-based deck and, and, and win with cards like Jace and Karanos and things like that. So anyways, Splinter Twin was probably one of those decks that the, it, it got banned according to Wizards of the Coast. One of the main reasons was the Wild and the wild Nicotle reason. Why play any other blue-red deck? when splinter tw the splinter twin combo is viable why would you try to find another win condition when that is very good because the the, the pieces work independently of 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 each other we started to see splinter twins being hooked up to pi and Karan Alar. we started seeing splinter twins every now and again putting on a snapcaster mage just for value or pestermite and deceiver exarch were just very very capable cards in a blue red tempo deck and so it was just like it, it took nothing to splash Splinter Twin in so many decks. We started seeing like Tarmu Twin decks and Jeskai Twin decks and even Living End Twin decks that it got to the point that it was just probably too much of violating that rule of diversity in the format. So I can actually see Wizards doing that just to, to spice things up. Now, one of the things that I don't know is maybe it was just too quick. On the Splinter Twin route. In the past, we've had Raining Volley that was printed. That I I don't know a Splinter Twin player after they saw me play a Raining Volley that kept the combo in. They always sided it out against like Scred, for example. And also we get the spatial, what is it? Spatial Contortion or or there's a, a Colas card out of uh, Devoid card out of the, this the Oath of the Gate Watch that completely shuts down the combo. Uh, for two man anyway, because uh, the, the the clause one of the the options you can choose is to um, is it exile or destroy target creature with either power or toughness one or less, and it also got rid of the pesky spell sky. So it was just a nice little answer. Another answer now for Tron. It was like almost every deck was getting this hate card versus twin. But I think that that has almost its its own negative back end to it. Where I even looked at the Soul Sisters, which again I have main board hate through Arik Champion and any of the Souls attendants or Soul Warden. Splinter Twin cannot go off with the Zebra Exarch um, if you have a Soul Warden out, and cannot go off, go off with Splinter Twin or uh, Pestermite if you had two Soul Sisters out. And so right there, I had what we called main boarded hate against Splinter Twin. But I even looked. I even looked at my sideboard, and I was. I'm probably dedicating five, six slots specifically for Twin, Sunder and Gross. Even though they hit enough decks, were specifically in there for Twin. I'm with Splinter Twin out of the format. I might even end up cutting Sunder and Gross, or maybe just down to a one of because it's decent versus Affinity, but it's not that great versus Affinity. It's just. I, I mean, it does what a Path of Exile kind of does. I mean, it takes care of a cranial plating, but eh. I don't really care too much about it. I mean, there's other things that I could, like more Stony Silences could be better against the Affinity decks. There's just plenty of other things if I specifically wanted to hate out Affinity would be much better. Same thing goes with Bogles. Sunder Growth is decent versus Bogles, especially when they get greedy and try to hook up their Daybreak Coronet to a, a creature that's only been enchanted once. You can two for one them and really make it miserable for them, especially if it's on their attack phase where they attack in and then you kill their enchantment, it makes the Daybreak Coronet fall off, you block their their uh, their Hexproof guy, and now they've basically they've lost the game just through that interaction. But if I was looking for specific cards, specifically to hate out Bogles there is like, uh, not back to nature, but there's one out of white that instant speed destroys all enchantments. I could run specific creatures that just enter the battlefield and... Uh, like Lillian Relic Warder, for example, because I don't quite know if I need to be instant speed with the Sunder and Growth. There is a lot of other options I could be running again, if I was specifically worried about that deck. And a lot of these cards were just in the Soul Sisters um, sideboard or other people's sideboards like Raining Volley. 
specifically for twin. And I think that that becomes a problem when every deck specifically has to try to hate it out, and then it doesn't end up being the greatest. Like there, some some of the hate cards versus Tron are very rough for Tron to play through. Uh, Splinter Twin, if you take care of the combo, they can still easily just out temple you. And Wizards of Coast is right. Why play these? other decks when you can just throw the splinter twin combo we've seen a lot of decks evolve uh like they quoted with jeskai control being almost uh, deckless for deckless the same deck that someone took i believe second or first at a, a, a grand prix or a pro tour and then end up winning the next one with jeskai splash in twin or uh there was like a aether vile based um teamer deck back in the day with with just teamer basically good uh, value based deck and then it turned it had tarmogoyas eternal witnesses snapcaster mages something like that and then they decided oh let's just throw the twin combo in there because it adds that whole another element that your opponent has to play around that and it's the same thing it was just a huge advantage for splinter twin to always feign that i've got the combo you bet like it was so rough too if you're if, if splinter twin has three mana open you'd always have to keep out a way to deal with like a flashed in pester might and then if you let that happen and let them splinter twin, or especially the, the worst case scenario is on uh, turn four, where they flash in and keep up dispel mana. And then you're like, okay, well, if I don't do anything there, then they splinter twin and keep up dispel mana. And then it's just it's just a nightmare. But I, again, I, I might just been too quick for a ban list when we just, if, if the format was was actually stale, we you you could you could make that argument for a ban list so this is kind of my cons against the ban list is we just had a lot of new archetypes especially a huge new archetype in the eldrazi which actually get even more powerful with oath of the gatewatch that now we have one of the premier control decks neutered so so badly that these eldrazi decks might just clean house um we also have like like the the abzan flicker decks abzan itself has made a, a comeback over Jund, the the good old three color Abzan or or our white white black green decks over traditional Jund decks because Lingering Souls and Lingering Souls and Siege Rhino and Kitchen Finks just do a lot better against that mono black Eldrazi deck than um, Jund does. Jund gets eaten alive by mono black Eldrazi. The uh, Abzan version does very well i think it actually has statistically better uh because siege rhino cannot be killed by the wasteland strangler blight herder is a joke for siege rhino i mean it's it's there's there's you have a better game plan i would say with abzan so i thought that the format is very shaken up right now it's so diverse if you play a modern league you're you're, you're most likely going to play five different decks and and i i have so many decks that i i i can say that i enjoy playing i mean there's there's just a, a a ton of them so i don't know mix it's 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 more black and white that people want to give uh the issue uh credit for i can see both sides of the story i can see a a point to banning and not banning but i think that in the, in the long run splinter twin did need the axe it can it's one of those cards like birthing pod with with every set it just keeps getting better and better and better and i'm actually a little bit um worried about the viability of of grixis like grixis same thing with colgan's command it just took it to a whole nother level how powerful that deck is but i think that grixis probably needed it and i'm still calling for that white needs some love i'm thinking that white based creature decks could use a card like mother of runes or stone stoneforge mystic or something to try to get them competitive in the format and a lot of people thought that stoneforge mystic would make the unbanning it ended up not happening. It just seems like the the Stoneforge Mystic Grand Prix promo is just going to be for funsies, really not not go with, coincide with actually cards being played. But we'll have to wait and see if that ever comes off the ban list. Uh, the, the Stoneforge Mystic or like Jace the Mind Sculptor or something like that to shake up the modern format if 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 it does become stale. So anyway, I've been rambling for quite a while now. Uh, Twenty minute ramble about the ban list. Let me know in your comment section what you think about it. If you think it's a good thing, bad thing. If you're like me and it's a, it's it's I am a completely neutral person with this i think there's as many uh, pros as there is cons and I, I would actually say that if you were to come down to it if you're really to weigh completely weigh the pros pros and cons i think that the the scale would be uh in favor for both banning summer bloom and banning uh splinter twins so that's my verdict uh kevin with rogue thanks for watching